So today we're going to be taking a look at a library which I wrote, which is called Instance Creator. And it's a library written in C Sharp that is meant to add some more capabilities to FFI. And if you don't know what FFI is or instances or stuff like that, go ahead and watch this series from the beginning. Because I get a lot of questions which evolve things that was said earlier in this series, make sure to watch the entire series before you get to here. But a few episodes back, there were a few people in the comments that asked, okay, so we can evoke a function, but how do we evoke an um, instance? And I was like, well, I don't think you can do that. And I mean, I, I can't find any information on it. I can't find anybody that has made it accessible. So, and I Googled and I tried to solve the problems and one of you guys also tried to solve the problem, but couldn't do it. I don't think there's a library for it. So me as a broker, I was like, I know reflections, I know C sharp, so let's just write this code. And that's also the reason why I picked C sharp and not C++, because I don't know C++ that well. But guys, I think we just get started and see the code so you can see how it works and if it is what you're looking for. But the first thing here is this giant map up here, which it's just, you know, a map of all the functions and you can go ahead and just download my version. I will leave both the library and all of this code down below because it's just a bunch of mappings and you don't really have to worry about them. And these are, by the way, the types that are supported. So that's the values you can share in between because we can only do basic types. We can't do complex types. But the first thing we do here is to load the assemblies. You want to go ahead and run this function without anything and just without any code working, just like this. And it will make a folder. And if we go ahead and open our folder here, Then you can see that I have this test library, which is this library here. And it's just a very basic library. And I haven't used DLL export. And that's important that you don't do that. Just export this as a normal DLL. That is very important that you do that because else it will actually break. But go ahead and copy your DLL into the assemblies folder. And then if you run this again, you can see it takes a little more time. And that's actually because it loaded that assembly and we actually have access to work with it. So we can go ahead and run this function here. Now it is not required. It is just to see all the different instances in that assembly. And you can see that we have this box instance, which is correct. So now we want to make an instance of that. So we say the assembly name because we can load multiple assemblies to determine which one you're talking about. You have to select the assembly name here and here you provide the instance name and here you provide the name that you want to give the instance. And this funny code over here is the parameters. And if there's no constructor parameters, go ahead and just replace this with null. Just straight up null, you don't have to put it in quotes or anything, just null. But this is the fully qualified name for a type. So make sure to just go ahead and use primitive types. But you know, if this was a string, you would just type string with an uppercase here. But then you provide the f name here a space and then the value and then uh, this here and then a space and then the value and continue as far as how many parameters you have. And if we go ahead and run this, we won't see a change, but if we go ahead and get something like the width, then you can see that we get that with a five. And if we go ahead and set that to something else, you can see that that changes. So the way this works here is that this is either set or get. And this here is either field or property. And this here is any of the primitive types listed in this list here. And that's the way you construct the different inputs outputs. So you will have to know if this width was a string or an integer or a float and go ahead and specify this here. And the reason why we have to do that is just that when FFI makes the binding to C sharp, it has to have a concrete type because it can't do dynamic types. I tried because it would be more simple because the code actually do not care. But because of that and the bindings didn't work properly, I had to make a copy of this. And that's also why there's so many functions here. 
And if we go to the code here, you can see that most of the code here is actually just the same code. It's just changing the type. And guys, if any of you know a better way of doing this, then please comment down below and share your code on GitHub. I will leave a link to the GitHub down below. That would be really cool if we could collaborate on a project because I don't have so much time to do this, but I do find it really, really fascinating and really, really fun. And I definitely want to add a lot more features to this, but I just don't have the time. But once we have set and get our fields, and we can of course do this with properties as well, then we can actually go ahead and evoke methods. So this will say the instance, and this is the method name. And this is the parameters. Like I said up here before, if you don't have any parameters, go ahead and provide null. And you can see that this gets us the volume. And we can even do this with parameters as well. And we can go ahead and change this here. And there you go. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button. If you want to see more of my videos, I have included two videos right here. And hopefully I see you in the next one.